One last time, Yuki has been transported to the familiar territory of a haunted dream world controlled by malignant forces. The Stagnant Nightmare. As stated, this is the Foghorn Cafe. It was the first level of the first game. It's also the location where the dishwasher and the chef earned their monikers. We were unable to go left at the beginning of the level, which is where a secret was in the first game. And these are the enemies of the first game, only they are now marionettes. Part of me likes to think this is the developers being self-deprecating about how awkward and generally ugly the first game is compared to its sequel, but I doubt they're as harshly critical of their own work as I am. The first game, by the way, not very good. As much as I love Ska Studios and want to support them, I can't really recommend it to anybody. These marionettes do have an interesting quality. They take no damage but are instantly killed by sufficiently heavy attacks. As such, doing combos is very inefficient. It's best to find a quick move that will instantly destroy them. This is the room where the soldiers are introduced in the first game. They are introduced here as well. You can see how similar they look to their Vampire Smile versions. All the marionettes have the same attack, where they shoot out those intestine-looking things and grab you. It's got quite a range on it. And an awkward hitbox. So if you're in front of them, don't be, unless you can destroy them quickly enough. My personal choice for destroying these marionettes is the chainsaw uppercut with the conviction that I've bragged so much about already. That intestine attack does a lot of damage, so you don't want to get hit by it too many times. Once we finish off all the marionettes in there, these chalk outlines come after us. Each of these chalk outlines is identical to a specific enemy from Vampire Smile. There's suicidal zombies, a couple different types of ninjas, and soldiers, possibly among others. This fight will be carrying on for quite a while as they do pour many, many enemies in here. Rather than blood, they leave behind chalk dust, which is a nice touch. Unfortunately, aside from their appearance, these are the same enemies that we are very well versed in killing at this point. So there's not too much to talk about here. I do believe that the appearance of the enemies as chalk outlines may represent that they were already ideas for new tools of killing that the fallen engineer had been thinking of even in this very early stage of his takeover. Finally, nearing the end of this. These last two are identical to blue ninjas. And here we find the first level's first boss. This is actually the fallen engineer himself. He started the game riding a horse spraying fire all over the place. In this form, he is completely harmless, and 
and a good place to test out that the attacks that I do deal no damage and will never kill him. But the chainsaw will. See what was controlling the marionettes. Of course, it was the fallen engineer who was controlling everything we're seeing. The changes in camera angle in this level are very cinematic. Give a nice feel to this ending level, which is otherwise quite easy. Makes for very nice set pieces, I think. Having dealt with all of his marionettes, comes to face us himself. This fight is very similar to his final fight in the first game, wherein he fuses with the synthesis AI of his creation. As with the previous fights, this is not too much of a challenge. This wave of attacks leave him quite vulnerable. And clearing every room of the Falkhorn Cafe brings us to the final destination. Final change to my bead loadout. Bringing the Cloud Sword down on the Fallen Engineer. He has all the same moves that he did back in 4 Stats Room, as well as a number of electricity moves. The gigantic ball of electricity moves very slowly, and the entire time it's out, he will stand in place. It's a good time to charge a Righteous Shockwave. Now trying out our comma for the first time since we fully upgraded it. There's probably his deadliest move. It's only made fair by the fact that it's so unlikely to hit. Switching back to Conviction, the only blade I've used against him during the 4 stat room. Even our AI controlled equivalent used it during the Dishwashers campaign. And I'm now completely out of magic, so our health bars are all that remain. Anytime he's shooting those missiles, you want to be dodging constantly. considerably faster now that he's on his last speck of health. With one last ditch effort, he's finally defeated. That brings out the painkiller to reduce him to a paste.
And that is the end of Dishwasher Vampire Smile. Yuki finally gets to celebrate her freedom after a long and bloody fight. The first three names in the credits here are the heads that were on the bosses that earned us the achievable speed. Dustin Berg, the marketing coordinator, no longer works for Scott Studios. And Michelle Jouette is now married to James Silva. The ending we saw there with uh, Yuki coming out on top after killing the dishwasher is not the canon ending of the game. Of course, if they are going to continue the series, they will do so with the titular character still alive. However, if they do not choose to continue the game series, I like to think of Yuki's ending as the canon ending in that case. This end credits theme in Loving Memory is a wonderful track. I highly recommend going to the Ska Studios website and downloading it along with all their other soundtracks for free. I would also recommend supporting them by buying this game. It's a scant $10 on the Xbox Live Arcade, and my descriptions of it being fun have done it no justice whatsoever. It will also eventually be coming to Steam, so keep a lookout for that. But there's one last thing we gotta do before we shut this thing down forever. That was the effect of the achievable speed. We got not an achievement, but an achievable for watching the credits. And I'll now be returning to where we originally got the achievable speed with the dishwasher to get some more achievables. There's a better look at the animation that we get for getting an achievable. I had so many achievables. Here's another one for spraying the squirt gun, which is one of the dishwasher's weapons. This isn't an achievable right here. This is actually me doing something that I thought was impossible which was summoning Neko as the dishwasher. Cut the ribbon on this present, and we get another achievable. And there's one left. Gotta kill Squid Face again. One could very well get all the achievables in a single run, provided they were playing as the dishwasher, since you do need the squirt gun to get them. Yuki can also get achievables, but she can't get the squirt gun one, so I didn't bother. This is normal difficulty, so enemies will be destroyed rather quickly. The squid already awaits his coup de gras. And getting them all gets a real achievement. The description of which tells us what all the achievables were, in case you wanted to know. And that's the end of this game. I will be doing a bonus video with a guest, showing off the highlights of the first game, so look forward to that. <laughs>